Hi, I'm Steve Sobeck, owner of amysflashcards.com. The purpose of this video is to show you a really neat mental math trick. This is a trick that will enable you to square any whole number up to and including 99 without paper or pencil or without a calculator. All right. Now I'm going to go through four examples with you to make sure you understand this procedure. And then finally, at the end, I'll show you why it works. I'll prove to you that this trick is always going to give you the correct answer. All right, so let's start with this example. Suppose we'd like to square 65. The square number, by definition, means to multiply that number by itself. So 65 squared means find 65 times 65. Now, the average person can't multiply 65 times 65 in their head. That's tough. But would you not agree that the average person, at least the person who is mo memorizes multiplication tables, has already gone through the earlier drills on uh, amysflashcards.com, could multiply these two numbers together, uh, 70 times 60. You'd say, oh yeah, that's easy. That would be 4,200. Yeah, well, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take 65 and add a 5 to it. And we're going to take 65 and subtract a 5 from it. And that gives 65 plus 5 is 70, and 65 minus 5 is 60. And then we're going to multiply these two numbers together, 70 times 60. Remember, this is like 7 times 10 times 6 times 10. I like to save the 10s for later, okay? So we got 7 times... 6, 42, and then we've got the uh, times 10, times 10, so that gives you a couple more zeros. 4,200. Now you might argue, well, that is not the same as 65 squared. And you're right. But I know exactly how much it's off by. It's off by the square of 5. So to compensate, I'm always going to, I'm going to add the square of this number that I added and subtracted. In this case, it was a 5. So I'm going to add 5 squared to the result. You might be asking, well, how do I know it's off by exactly 5 squared? All right, that's what I'm going to explain at the very end of this video, why we do that. All right, but for now, just take, take my word for it that we're going to, we're going to add the square of that number. And, and of course, uh, it's easy to, to add 4,200 plus 25 in our head. That gives me 4,225. Okay, and that's the, uh, our final answer. So there's example one. Uh, let's go through a couple more examples. Uh, let's go on to uh, example two. Suppose we're trying to find the square of 23. Some folks might think, well, in the last example, we added a 5 and subtracted a 5, so maybe we should do the same thing here. Not so. We want to have an easier multiplication problem down below here. Easier means factors that end in 0. All right. Now, the, the number closest to 23 that ends in a 0 would be 20. So my target, I desire to have a factor of 20 here. To accomplish that, we don't subtract 5. We would have to subtract 3. And of course, we have to add the same number that we subtracted over there. So we have to add a 3 over here. Now that gives me a 26. 26 isn't, isn't, so, isn't so nice, but, it, but this is very nice. And, and and so uh, it's not so hard to multiply these together in our heads. Again, when I multiply by 20, I first multiply by 20 is 22 times 10. So I first multiply by 2, and then I, then I multiply that answer by 10. So 2 times 26 is uh, 52, and then times by another 10 gives you 520. And of course, we have to compensate. This is not equivalent to 23 squared. It's off by exactly the square of 3. So we're going to add 3 squared 
to this result. We're going to add 9 to 520, giving me 529. Okay. All right, so there's example number two. We're about to jump into example number three. And if you feel pretty strong at this point, you could, uh, as soon as I display, uh, uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and do that. As soon as you see this uh, next problem, if you want to pause the video and jump in there and give it a shot, do it. And then, uh, and then uh, restart the video and see if we do it the same way. All right, now, now I, <clears throat> I wouldn't blame someone seeing a 94. The nearest number that ends in 0 to 94 would be 90. So uh, I wouldn't blame someone if they decided to subtract 4, you know, giving a 90 here, and add a 4, and giving a 98, and then multiplying uh, 90 times 98. That's workable. But you know what? 94 is pretty doggone close to 100. And I really like multiplying by 100. So to get 100, I would have to add a 6 to 94. And of course, you have to subtract a 6 from 94. Okay, that would give us uh, 88 here. And we would have to, of course, add the square of 6 here. Now, it's easy to take 100 times 88. That gives me uh, 8,800. And we're adding 6 squared, which is uh, 36. And 8,800 plus 36 is... 8836. And there's our final answer. Okay. Very, very manageable for an average person who knows their multiplication tables and their addition tables. Very manageable to be able to do this in their heads without paper or pencil with practice. All right. All right. One more example. And again, if, if you want to, when I display this next example, if you want to pause it and jump in there and give it a try and then restart it, you know, feel free to pause the video now and, and give that a shot. All right, now here's, um, we're trying to find the square of 88, which means 88 times 88. I would uh, anticipate, I would predict that, that many people <coughs> would shoot for something pretty close to 88, 90. All we would have to do is add a 2. And of course we'd have to subtract a 2 here, and then at the very end add the, the square of 2, 2 squared of 4, uh, to the result. Okay, I don't want to forget about that. And uh, that's not too bad. 88 minus 2 would, would give me uh, 86. And we'd have to calculate 90 times 86 in our head. First multiply by 9 and then multiply by the 10. Uh, 9 times uh, 80 is 720 plus another 54 is uh, 774. Then times it by the 10 and that gives you uh, 7740. And then add the 4 to that giving us uh, 7744. That's not too bad, but it's not what I would have done. Let me show you an alternative. Uh, I'm using the same strategy, but, but maybe with a different, different value instead of the, the two. Let me um, jump over here and uh, <laughs> you remember earlier I said I really like multiplying by a hundred. Well, even numbers in the 80s, from 80, 81 above, I like to shoot for a hundred. I would just have to add 12 more to this to reach a hundred. And of course, subtract uh, 12 from 88. So we have a minus 12 here. 
which would give a uh, 76. And of course we uh, have to add the square of 12 here. Now it's very easy to take 100 times 76. That would be 7600. Now for some folks this would be very easy and, and others might maybe not so so easy. I personally memorized all of the perfect squares of all the whole numbers up to 20. So I know 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, 14 squared is 196, 15 squared is 225, all the way up to 19 squared, uh, 361. So when I see a 12 squared, I, 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 I know that's 144 instantly because I've chosen to multiple, memorize those perfect squares. So if you do likewise, then you could, you, you could, uh, shoot for 102 even within the 80s. All right, stretch that out a bit. But if you don't want to memorize all those numbers up through, you know, you don't want to memorize 17 squared is 289 and 18 squared is 324, I guess, etc. Then, then, then shoot for 90. Okay, 90 times, um, uh, 86, you know, that you can go that route. But, uh, this to me is, uh, is easier because I really like multiplying by 100. And 7600 plus 144 is 7744. Same answer that we got, uh, on the last slide. Slightly different, uh, values. And, uh, and so that's, that's how to use this mental math trick. All right. We're always adding and subtracting the same number so that we end up with an easier multiplication problem to do here. But then we understand that that's not exactly equivalent to the square of the number that we, we started with. We have to compensate by adding the square of that, whatever this number is here, we have to add the square of that over here and then we end up with a final answer. All right, that's the trick. Now, some folks aren't interested in knowing why that works. So, you know, you might want to just jump over to amysflashcards.com and look for the drill, uh, for that always, you know, squares, numbers, you know, 73 squared, 88 squared, 92 squared, etc. But, um, for those who are curious, want, want to know why this works, let's go to the last slide and let me see if I could prove to you that that this memory trick will always work. All right. Suppose we want to find the square of a. That's a squared. By definition, that means a times a. So these two are equivalent to each other. We want to show that our expression, if we take a, another value, another whole number less than a, uh, call it b, and add that to a here, and subtract that same value, b, here. And multiply these two together and then add the square of b to the result. We need to demonstrate that that is always going to be equal to a squared. All right, so let's see if we can do that. Let's take this expression and manipulate it through legitimate transformations and, and see if we come up with a squared. All right, we're going to have to multiply these two binomials together. All right, um, a plus b times a minus b. Some people, when, they, um, when they're multiplying binomials, they like to think of that acronym FOIL. F-O-I-L. F stands for multiply the first terms together. Uh, the A times the A, and then O stands for the outside terms, and then I stands for the inside terms, and then B stands for the, the last, the last term of the first binomial multiplied by the last term of the second binomial. Alright, so we have four lines of multiplication that we have to, uh, take care of. Let's start with, uh, the A times A. That gives us A squared. minus AB
inside terms plus uh, BA, which is BA is the same as AB. Multiplication is is commutative. Okay, so we're just, I'm just going to write AB. minus b squared. Okay, we have some like terms here. Okay, like terms can be, only like terms can be added and subtracted. These two terms right here, this is like a minus 1ab and a plus 1ab, which is, gives you 0ab. And 0 times ab is 0, so we have a, a squared minus 0 is just a squared. In other words, these two terms wipe each other out leaving us with just an a squared minus a b squared in the parentheses. And we still got this um, b squared that we're going to be adding on at the end, plus b squared. And if you like, a subtraction is subtracting b squared is like adding the opposite of b squared. So you could think of this as all addition, and, which is associative, which means you could regroup in any way you want. So we're going to combine these two terms, minus 1b squared plus 1b squared, which is 0b squared, which is 0. a squared plus 0 is just a squared. So the proof is done. We've demonstrated that this memory trick, this line right here, is always going to be equivalent to the square of A. All right. Now, whether you understood that or not, it really doesn't matter in terms of application. Okay. You, you can use the mental math trick without understanding why, why it works. But, um, but I hope you agree that it's a pretty neat trick and it certainly makes problems like 88 squared and 93 squared a lot easier and uh, even easy enough to do in your head if you practice. So I hope that you go to amysflashcards.com and look for some of those flashcard-like drills uh, like this one and there's many other mental math tricks that I show you uh, on that website and I uh, hope you um, uh, benefit from those. So that's it.